Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video, we're going to use pandas and matplotlib to analyze a data set. So the data set we're going to analyze is the graduate admissions data set, which is a CSV file, and uh, I'll post that data file, and I'll also post this Jupyter notebook on my GitHub site, so you can download both of them and try them out. I'll also post the Jupyter notebook in a text format in a Python file, so that you can run the Python file if you don't use Jupyter. First, we're going to load in the data. We're going to have a couple import statements. Import numpy as np, import pandas as pd, import matplotlib.pyplot. Those are the three main libraries we're going to use as plt. And these are the standard ways to write these import statements. So you should probably stick with the convention. And then just to read in the data, we just have one line. This is our text file, our data file name, admission predict ver 1.1.csv. So the DF here is a data frame in NumPy. These are called data frame is, is what's called basically a, an Excel sheet with all of our data in it. So we're going to load this data into a data frame. We, we say DF equals PD or pandas dot read CSV and then the file name. And it loads all of that data in to a data frame, a pandas data frame. And then we can print out the shape and you can see the, the shape that we get is 500 by 9. So there are nine fields, or nine uh, columns, and 500 rows. And then we print out df.info, and when you print out info on a data frame, what you get is a, kind of a summary view of all of the columns. These are all the columns and what data type there are. There's 500 records in each one of them, so there are no missing records. And we can see that they're uh, int64 and float64s. So they're all numerical data. So our next step, we're going to clean up the columns. Uh, there's one column that we don't need, which is serial number. And we can see there's a serial number column here. And the reason we don't need that is because pandas always assigns a row ID to each row of data in the data frame. So we just don't need serial number because it's totally redundant. So we're going to use um, df equals df.drop. In other words, drop is, is we can use to delete a either a column or a row. And we say axis equals one, that means we're going to delete a column. And it's the column with the header of the serial number. So that deletes the serial number column and reassigns the new data frame to df. Next we want to rename those columns to something a little more user friendly. You can see up here some of the column names. Yeah, they're just normal names that you would name something. But usually in programming, it's a lot easier and more convenient to have really brief, all lowercase names for, for stuff. So I rename stuff. This is basically a dictionary. You pass that into these new names. You can see our names there. New names equals, and then a, new, a dictionary. And then we use df.rename to rename the columns of the data frame. Columns equals new names. That's the dictionary that we're passing in that we have up here and uh, in place replacement. And then we print out the head, which is the first five lines of the data frame after that. And you can see the column names are all renamed, just simpler names for us to work with in, in this, this program here. And the first five lines of the, the data. So the data, let me walk you through the data real quick. We have a GRE score, which is your test score for the graduate record uh, entrance exam. The TOEFL, Test of English as a Foreign Language. Um, the rating of your university that you, you went to. SOP is your Statement of Purpose. This is kind of a score of the quality of your Statement of Purpose letter. And LOR is Letters of Recommendation, how strong your Letters of Recommendation are. Your GPA, your Cumulative GPA score. And whether or not you have research, and this is binary. So either zero, no research, or one, you've done some research and have published a paper or two. And then each of these has some kind of correlation with your chance of getting accepted, which is chance. So that's basically a summary of what the data is. Now let's scope out the data. We're going to show some box plots just so that we can see a high-level distribution of the main columns of the data. We want to kind of see how these, the data are distributed. And we can use pandas.describe to also see a high-level distribution of the data but in a um, text format. So let's look at the box plots. PLT.figure, 
we're going to create a new figure and the size is going to be 14 by 4, 14 wide by 4 tall. And gosh, I don't even know what dimension that is. It's certainly not pixels. And then we're going to use a loop to create these plots, the subplots within the box plot. So we're going to use a loop from 1 to 5, basically, since the 6 is not inclusive. And then the plot, 1, 5, 1 is the row. 5 is, uh, five is the number of items in that row. And then I is the ith item. So first we're going to define this one, and then this one, and then this one. Each time through the loop, we're defining a different box plot. So plt.boxplot, um, we set the, we set the um, data using whichever column we want. We grab one column at a time. So we're going to grab column I. So again, first column 1, which is TOEFL, for, and then column 2, which is rating, and then so on. And then we set the title. The title is set to exactly the same thing as the column name. And you can see that in the box plots here. And that's it. So that's a pretty simple way to just, you know, not too jazzed up or anything, but and then we do plt.show to display the box plots. And then lastly, df.describe is a nice little kind of statistical summary of our data frame, which shows kind of the same data that we have in the box plots, but it shows a numerical table. So there are our box plots, and we can see the range of the data. So the describe table gives us the count of the records the mean for each column, the uh, standard deviation for each column, the min, max, and 25th, 50th, and 75th percentiles for each one of those, which we can also see in the box plot, but this is numerical format. So now we can see how spread out the data is. Next, we're going to look at uh, the detailed data distribution, and by that I mean we're going to use histograms for each column of data so we can see exactly how it's spread out. And we use a DF, and then we pass in what fields we want. We want all of these columns. And then we would use dot hist to create a histogram. So there are a bunch more parameters over here for the histogram. We set the figure size 14 by 9. Bins is basically how many columns we want on this histogram chart. You can set that to whatever you want. It looks nice if it's 10 or 15, 20. I set it to 16, so we have like 16 columns on each each bar. And then uh, line width is basically an outline around the bars. It doesn't look too good without that outline. Uh, edge color K, which means black, so you have a black a thin outline. And grid equals false. You can show a grid on the background if you want on those. And then show the plot. So here we have uh, six different plots. And you can kind of see how most of the data is normally distributed for the most part. Um, this is your chance of acceptance. This is our uh, GPA, GRE score, the rating of your university, and research is not normally distributed because it's binary. So there's you either have no research or you have research. And then TOEFL score is not very well distributed but still, still spread out. Now let's look at the correlation between each column and the chance of acceptance. Because chance of acceptance is really what we're trying to, to determine, and each one of the other attributes has uh, an effect on that. So we're going to calculate the correlation between each data column and the chance of acceptance. And what you'll see here, there's actually it's really simple to do, df.core, and then you put chance in the square brackets, and that's really all there is to it. And then separately I decided, oh yeah, let's show a bar chart too. So we're showing a bar chart with um, correlation data, and we're coloring it gray. So these two lines shows this plot, and then we print out this correlation that we calculated up here. So pretty easy to determine co correlation for all of these using pandas. That's the great thing about pandas. You can, you can calculate all this with one really short, easy line of code. Anyway, you can just look at these numbers in the, the chart here, uh, or in the bar chart. You can see GPA is the tallest one. Chance, of course, has a one-to-one -one correlation with itself. That doesn't, that doesn't count. GPA is the tallest one, so that's probably the most important factor in acceptance, followed by GRE and then TOEFL. So those three are the big three. Those are three are the three that make a difference. And then when you see down at research, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. 
It's not very indicative of whether or not you're going to be accepted. Okay, plot relations between GRE and TOEFL and GPA and GRE. So I wanted to show um, two-dimensional plot, basically, between two different variables. So we're using df.plot, and then we put kind is scatter, the scatter plot, which is going to show all the points on a plane. And then for x values, GRE, y values, TOEFL, and we're going to color the dots green. And then we labeled these axes, TOEFL and GRE. That's all that does. And show the plot. So this is a nice, quick, easy way to show a plot of TOEFL versus GRE. And basically, the tighter this cluster is around a center line, uh, the tighter the correlation is between them. But when you have outlying points like this, you don't really know what that means. It's like, well, we have a high TOEFL score, but not necessarily a high GRE. So you'd like to see a, a tight correlation between them because it's easier to make predictions that way. But we see they're fairly tightly clustered. You, you, can, um, you can see that if someone has a high GRE, you can estimate that they probably have a fairly high TOEFL score as well. People in general who did well on one test also did well on the other. And then with uh, GRE versus GPA, again, you see some spread, There's some, but there's a clear linear relation between them so that the higher one's GPA is, the higher his GRE is likely to be. Now let's look at plot relations between chance of acceptance and each of the other features. So I did this using a for loop. We're going to loop through six different columns and we're going to plot them on a scatter chart. We're going to use our x-axis as chance for each one of them. And then the y-axis is going to be whatever that column name is. And we set our labels, and then we show the plots. Again, really easy to generate a whole series of plots for each one of these attributes. And here we can see the relationship, TOEFL versus chance of acceptance, what we'd like to see is less spread of the points, because the tighter the cluster of points al along a line, the more tightly linear relation they have, the easier it is to predict, given a TOEFL score, what is my chance of acceptance? See, when you have people that did well on a TOEFL, like these guys, and basically still have a fairly low chance of acceptance, that's not very indicative. So you, need, you want to see a tight cluster, and you're looking for attributes that have a strong linear relation in other words, they're tightly clustered around a line, so they have a very good indication of chance of acceptance. And then this is a rating of your school. And again, we don't have, we have a lot of spread here, which is not very helpful for us. This is why the rating of school is not very, very helpful as a predictor, because it's really too spread out. And sure, as you get closer to the higher rated schools, they have a better chance of acceptance. But look, these guys in the middle 3.0, really doesn't tell you anything about your chances of acceptance. And then uh, SOP, your statement of purpose, uh, again, these are not really clustered in the center, which we'd like to see. They're very well spread out. So again, not very indicative. Sure, as you have a better SOP, you have a better chance of acceptance, and a lower SOP is a lesser chance of acceptance, but the spread across each one of these is, is very wide. So it's not a very good predictor. Letter of recommendation, same. And now look at GPA. You can see that people with a high GPA have a very high chance of acceptance. People with a low GPA have less chance of acceptance. Uh, certainly on the high GPAs, it's very predictive. Yes, I have a good GPA. Yes, I get in. And then uh, research is a binary play. So it's either you have research or you don't. And the problem here is if you don't have research, well, you still could just about have the same chance as someone who does have research of getting in. These are, you'd like to see a step function where if you don't have research, you don't get in. And if you do have research, you do get in. Then that would be a good indicator. But this is not a good indicator because look how spread out these are. So your chance is almost the same whether you have research or you don't have research. So that wraps up this video. The idea here is to be able to analyze data with a few lines of code and to understand, one, how the data breaks down and how it's organized and structured, and two, how to visualize it and gain some insights from it without a whole lot of effort. And you can do that using pandas and matplotlib, and I hope you learned that from this video.
I hope you liked this video. If so, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.